Hey everybody! It's been a minute since I've done any kind of a video, I know. Um, simple reason is I don't want to put makeup on. <laughs> really, that's it. So anyway, one of the questions I get more than anything is how do I make my buttercream, number one, and number two, how do I get it so white? Well, I filmed a video yesterday, a tutorial on how I make my buttercream, but I, there are some things that I thought would be better off for me to tell you about. So my buttercream has a specific method of how you make it so that it's A, white, and B, about as bubble free, air bubble free as it can possibly be. Because we all know that those air bubbles, oh, those air bubbles are going to be the death of us, right? So hard to get your cake smooth. And even with this technique, the air bubbles after time do come back. And I'll explain later what to do in that situation. But first of all, let me tell you that my buttercream recipe, I'll link it and um, it will be in the video also. But my buttercream is, I use all butter, all uns unsalted butter, powdered sugar, salt, clear vanilla, clear vanilla, very important, and um, water. You can sub milk for the water if you prefer, but I find that water works just fine. And actually, I kind of, I think it kind of combats some of the bubbles. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's how it feels to me. Um, so anyway, so that's the recipe. And if this technique does not make it white enough for you, you can always add white food coloring. Um, that's a mixed thing for me because it does kind of, to me, sometimes if you have to add too much, it sometimes to me changes the texture a little bit. So I like to get it as white as I can without adding that. And I have seen, I just, it's coincidental that another YouTuber that I follow, Cake by Linz, she just last week uploaded this video when I was planning on doing this. So um, one thing that she mentioned that I'd never heard of before, it makes total sense because, um, long story short, I used to be a hairstylist. So I color theory, I have a pretty good idea, a pretty good grasp on color theory. So this makes sense to me. You can always add a little bit of purple. I mean, a little, a little bit of purple food coloring to combat the combat, combat, combat the yellow. It's they're kind of opposite sides. Put them together, one will cancel out the other a little bit. Um, but it's just a little tiny, tiny bit. And you would need less of the purple than you would need of the white food coloring. Does that make sense? You would need more white food coloring to combat the yellow than you would purple. So I haven't tried it, but it looked like it worked and it makes total sense. So there's that. I'm looking at my little notes here. Also, you can sub out high ratio shortening for, I would say maybe up to half of the butter. If you live in a climate where humidity, which it is here in Iowa too, humidity is an issue, but I have a way of develop uh, that I have figured out to um, deliver that kind of helps with that. Maybe someday I'll go over that. So you can sub the high ratio for more stability. Do not, I repeat, do not, learn from me, do not use Crisco for this. Crisco, they changed the formula of it, which I get, I do get for dietary reasons, but they went from a solid fat to a liquid fat. So think about it, liquid, you're adding liquid to your buttercream. What's that gonna do? I actually had a couple cakes where the buttercream slid off the cake, so that's not good. So high ratio costs more, but it's a safety net. I just don't use any. Um, I find that it works just fine. The recipe that I have that I'm showing you today is a large batch recipe. You can have it. You can even quarter it if you want to. But the method that I'm going to show you would not work because of the technicalities of the actual process of the mixing, which you'll understand at the end of the video. So you would have to use either a spatula to beat out those air bubbles, or you could actually even pipe it on your cake or on your cupcakes like you normally would with a piping bag. Because when you squeeze it through the piping bag, it tends to pop some of those air bubbles. Not all of them, but some of them, it would help. So there's that too. This is a great buttercream as a base buttercream for other flavors. You can add almost anything to this buttercream. You could add peanut butter. You could sub out, I would say, a quarter 
So this recipe has six tablespoons of vanilla extract. I would probably do four of the butter, two of the almond extract. You could do that too, that's yummy. You can add jams, you can add brown sugar, you can add lime or lemon juice. Um, you can even make it cream cheese. You can just add some cream cheese to your taste as you're mixing the butter. As you're whipping the butter, you would also add the cream cheese at that point to eliminate the chance of having clumps. It's harder to add the cream cheese later. You want it all creamed together. Um, start with everything room temperature. Very important. Start with it room temperature. That's key. Otherwise, you are going to be dealing with lumps or longer whipping time, which I did kind of come into that problem with when I was doing the video because I had a room temperature overnight, but our house was cold. So I did have to whip it a little longer than I normally would. Um, you can add any color to it. I would use, I use the gel colors, the gel food colors, because you can add less of them than you would have to with those, what are they, tones, tonies, whatever those little bottles that our moms used to use. Not so good, unless you're going for a pale colors, like a mint when you use your green or a pink when you use your red. Okay, and this will crust over. This is a crusting buttercream, which not everybody likes. I do for what I do, wedding cakes and custom cakes. A, cu a crusting buttercream works better because there are a lot of techniques that I have to do on a surface that's not going to get screwed up. <laughs> I know you can refrigerate a uh, Swiss meringue. I like Swiss meringue and I know you can refrigerate it and work with it, but you know, it's just not what I got used to. I just like the American. I know it's super sweet, but you know what? It's dessert. It's supposed to be sweet. <laughs> That's my thought on that. Um, when you make this buttercream, you could store it in the freezer for probably up to six months. You could also store it in the refrigerator for one, one month. We'll say one month to be you know, so things don't start tasting a little funny, but you're going to have to whip it up again. You're probably going to have to go through the whole whipping process again, which, like I said, when you watch the video, that will all make sense. So I think I covered it all, I think. But if there's something I missed or you have questions that I wasn't thinking of, um, please leave me a message. I love your questions, your comments, um, and I get back to everybody. So I think that's all I've got. So Let's watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys.